Tesla's got some big tech moves this week, but oh my gosh, it is of course all bad news all the time. I am so scared. I need some comfort. Someone please talk me down from this ledge. Uh, that's why I'm joined by <laughs> Herbert from Brighter. He's going to be my emotional support, Herbert, for the day. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So Herbert, oh, I don't know if you've heard that terrible, terrible news. Tesla Optimus robot <laughs> can't even compete at the trade show. Uh, what? Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you. You're asking me a question because yeah, oh, yeah. no, they yeah, cannot. The question they cannot is what? They can't compete. They can't compete. All Tesla did was show the bot in behind these glass, uh, you know, behind the glass. They won't even let you there. Meanwhile, did you see all the Chinese um, robots out there? And a lot of uh, female ones they are walking around and so forth. And that's what they're saying, right? Is that funny? Yeah, they can't compete. No, they will not show you the latest Gen 3. They're not going to show you their secrets. They're not going to show you their new technology. They're going to do it on their own terms. This is just to be part of the conference. They've learned their lesson in the past. I mean, not that they've learned a lesson, but you know that Tesla... Everybody copies Tesla. Everything that they do, they tear these apart if they can get their hands on it. They want to do it right because they know Tesla's the leader. They know that Tesla has the right technology. So what they did was they just showed you, you know, the, a version of the bot just so you can see that they have a participation, but they're not going to demo it. They don't need to. I've, I've talked to you about this just very recently in the show that we did. If you're a Coke, you don't do a te Pepsi taste test. <laughs> you don't go, let me show you how mine compares to all the inferior challengers out there. But every other uh, competitor will always want to say, we are the Tesla killer. We're better than Tesla because Tesla is clearly the leader. So no, this is good news. I'm so happy that they did this. They do not need to show off. Um, they can do it on their own terms and they can surprise everybody. And they're going to just shock the world how far ahead they, they are to everybody. You've heard Elon say that 50% of the engineering is the hands. They're now going to go to 22 degrees of freedom. That includes the arms. They're inventing beyond actuators. They're now creating these arm kind of like tendons to pull the fingers forward. They are copying what a human, you know, what humans are, the human body is made of. No one is going to be able to do this and it's not off the shelf. They would have to build these parts. And so until Tesla shows you what they're doing, these other competitors will need to tear it down and then try to copy it. And they want to have as far of a lead as they can by that point. So <laughs> it's ridiculous. It reminds me of when Mike Tyson had his first comeback career after prison yeah. and a lot of the publicity surrounding it was, oh, I think Mike Tyson might actually be in trouble this fight because he's not out hyping. I haven't even seen him training as hard as he usually does. And he's just, look, I'm so far ahead. This is ridiculous. But yeah. you have to go up through the ranks to get these fights to happen. Um, where would this robotics conference even be were it not for AI Day just a couple of years ago? That's what kicked off this huge surge in, in humanoid robotics we're seeing today. Yeah. I just thought this was a funny headline because Jim Chanos, famous short seller, <laughs> said, oh, look at that Tesla Optimus. It yes. can't even compete. Yeah. So can't or won't. Are you firing up that furnace to burn another bucket of billions, <laughs> my friend? Because <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Uh, so I just... Oh, I couldn't believe it. Well, somebody so, like a Jim Chanos would say something like that, but I'll tell you who's not saying that. None of the Chinese uh, robotics companies are going to dare say, oh, look, we are so far ahead than Tesla. They know that Tesla is the leader and they're just trying to keep up. Well, we're like Tesla, except better. I only hear that kind of hubris from people like Peter Rawlinson. Ooh. Yeah. So now we've got uh, this little bit of fun here. This is more exciting. I know you've done a couple shows on this topic. Elon shows off AI Cortex, uh, the supercluster. First look at Tesla's 50,000 H100s. I don't know where now, they got 50,000 um, from. It's 100,000. Well, I think 100, isn't 100,000 the final number? Or is that mm -hmm. what they're actually installing now? Yeah, I don't know. Good question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it is quite a big deal. Um, I don't know. Woo. Yeah, that was that was too loud. This is an so old you get version. an idea of. Uh huh. Wait. No, this is the new one. This is the new one. Yep. 
that Elon just posted recently. It is a thing of beauty. It is a thing of beauty. Uh, so what are we looking at here and what is it for? Oh, of course, Cortex Supercluster, right? It's going to be used for AI training for both FSD and the bot. And this is massive. This is as big as you can get. And they're going to get, probably get even bigger. You've been following it more closely than I am, how, how I am, how quickly this is coming up. They talked about how they were able to get the Memphis Supercluster for XAI up in 19 days. And so I love the way that both XAI and Tesla you know, it's probably the same team. It's like they're sharing knowledge. If they can build multiple data centers, massive supercomputer clusters, he calls it the cortex. This is going to be the brain, he said at one point, right? A brain for AI training. This is training for all the data that only Tesla has access to. Massive amounts of data that's sitting there. And if you don't have compute, you're compute constrained. It doesn't matter how much data you have. But now that you are no longer compute constrained, when this comes on, it's unbelievable. I asked the question with the panel yesterday, which included Omar, Omar's catalog, people who are experts in FSD. What does this mean that the Cortex supercluster is about to be in production? It's this big. How much more progress can we see? And it's going to be an exponential growth in the neural net uh, releases that we're seeing in FSD. FSD is coming out and it's all based on compute power, right? Because the neural nets need that much compute power. You need to input the videos for all the different edge cases, and you need to be able to then process it through in order for it to just to learn how to drive like a best human driver would take over that same, same scenario. So this just means more edge cases, more video can be processed, faster processing, um, smarter neural nets. So this is, it's the name of the game. It's like the bigger compute they've discovered, the bigger the compute, the more that the neural nets can surprise you of what it can figure out and what it can learn and how it can uh, behave. So one way I look at it is when you're compressing data, uh, when, you're con when you're using data at all, you need to compress it. You need to yeah. limit the scope of what you're looking at. And you can run uh, some versions of self-driving on very lightweight computers nowadays. Yeah. Um, Comma AI famously did it originally on basically a cell phone. Uh, but the more data you can include beyond that, the more edge cases you can capture. If you look at something like audio compression, the more you compress it, maybe 90% of people won't notice that it's compressed. You can compress it even further and maybe half the people won't notice. But no matter how much you, how well you compress it, there's going to be somebody who can tell. And those are the kinds of edge cases. So you have to do a lossless compression. So I uh, found the answer here. 50,000 NVIDIA H100s plus 20,000 of our own hardware. So that's very exciting. Hey, do you have any ideas where they might look to solve it first? Yeah. So this isn't a solution. This is still... Uh, this would still be supervised initially boring company to start using FSD in the tunnels. Have you seen this? I did. Yeah. I mean, the CEO of the Las Vegas convention authority, Steve Hill, he's the one that was saying this, right? That he's expecting that not only will be more boring tunnels in progress and will be completed as they expand the site, but that he's expecting the autonomy full self-driving will be implemented in the near future. Now, I'm sure there's going to be different stages of how it works, but it makes the most sense, doesn't it? Like it's like a tunnel is the safest place to try out full self-driving autonomy. They can certainly do it. And if it can't do it, well, it's easy enough to add little markers here and there to, you know, clear lane lines. It's less likely to have any cross traffic, pedestrians, those kind of things. So it's almost like a, a sure thing that this would be a place where they would you know, do this. I, I'm pretty sure I can already do it now. Honestly, <laughs> the only thing that's missing is reverse because it does have to reverse out of the parking spots. Yeah. But this does make sense. They held off on doing this for a very long time because they wanted it to work everywhere. They didn't want to create a separate fork that would have to be maintained separately, updated separately for new vehicles. But if it can handle just if it can run on regular FSD, do it. Let's get it done. The difference, people say, well, Tesla or SpaceX has been landing rockets. You know how hard that is. I say, right, but there's no traffic. They have a closed airspace. All they have to do is manage their own physical occupation of space and know where the, the ground is, yeah. know where the landing zone is. This is different. There's infinite variables on the road. 
but far fewer in the tunnels. So they're, they're currently using existing Model Ys, Model Xs, those kind of cars, right? I think this is a perfect pilot for the new RoboTaxi, the RoboTaxi design vehicle. And in fact, I'm expecting it to be, as we've been talking about so often, that is, I don't think it's going to be this compact two seater, you know, tiny little compact car with the scissor wings or whatever like that. It's going to be like canoes. It's going to be like a canoes version of it, which is like a, you know, I've been saying a London cab, two people can sit on one side, two people on the other. It's an open space. It's like a van almost sliding mini van doors. Perfect place to test something like this out. And then you can even have larger bus like larger train like and all of this is automated. It's just like it's the future and it's clearly coming. Do you remember that one um, video that Tesla launched a long time ago, a teaser video for these kinds of um, you know, kind of vehicles that we're talking about is going around and it can have like parts of the street where it goes down and its elevator goes back up and now you're back in the surface streets and then you go back into the tunnels. That's what this is. This is where we're headed. I think you're absolutely right. And if we go back to this map here, this is kind of neat to look at. It is, uh, this is it. This is everything. This is, they're going to be, uh, covering the whole town here at some point um, all the green indicates planned lines mm. and all the orange indicates ones that are either done or underway as we speak <laughs> so you can see that they plan to pop up in every single building every single company you know casino whatever it is right you should have a stop yes, in every because place. Because every casino has to pay for their own terminal. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's covering a big chunk of all of the digging. If Proof Rock 4 is as good as they expect it to be, they might put in five or ten of them at once to start digging in different directions at different times. When they tunneled through the Swiss Alps to put in that fantastic uh, tunnel just a few years ago, they actually had one, they had four, four machines working at the same time because they had popped a, a vertical shaft down in the middle and sent two boring machines out in both directions while mm. others were coming in from the sides of the mountains. And it, you know, cut the time by four, or at least in half. So it was a pretty effective way. And unlike in other tunneling applications, when you're done with a boring machine from Tesla, from the boring company, yeah. you don't just bury it and leave it there forever. You pop it out, bring it somewhere else and reuse it. Reusability. It's yeah. a crazy thought. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's all very exciting. I guess what I'm saying is the future's here and it's now and it's exciting. So, guys, do me a favor. Head on over to uh, Herbert's channel. Check out what he's up to. He does some fantastic work over there. Everybody else, like, subscribe. You know what you're doing. Stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots constantly because that's when I publish.